Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I hope you're ready to learn how to perform animations inside of our iOS apps using auto layout constraints. Now this might seem a little bit complicated in the beginning, but after today's lesson, you're going to have a perfect understanding as to how to actually do this. And I'm going to use this application over here as our example, and I'm going to animate Steve Jobs all around the corner of this entire application. Now the reason why you would prefer to use auto layout constraints animations instead of frames is because let's say Steve Jobs is in the bottom right corner over there, right? If I rotate the application, he's going to remain in the bottom right corner and I don't have to deal with the CG rect recalculation just to place him in the right location. And furthermore, if I keep on animating, then Steve Jobs is still going to go all around the corner of my app. All right, so now that you know exactly what we need to build out here, let's dive into Xcode and see exactly what the implementation looks like. All right, so I have a brand new single view application created inside of Xcode. Let me just remove that method over there. And run my application, we should be able to see a perfectly white blank screen inside of the simulator like this. So pretty good start. And now what I want to do is to place something inside of the top left corner so that I can tap on it and also execute some animation code. So I'm going to actually place an image view in the top left and let's just create it programmatically in code like this. And doing this programmatically is actually much, much easier than the storyboard. So let's just go ahead and do this. And why don't we call this Steve Jobs image view? <clears throat> and let's say let image view equals UI image view. And this guy, we can just use this image constructor and return this image view like that. And now what I need is this image over here. So let's open up assets. I am going to drag in this image for Steve Jobs. You can obviously uh, drag in whatever you feel like and just hit Steve Jobs like that and you get access to that image. And here we go. So how can we add this into our view in the top left corner? Well, this is pretty easy if you don't use auto layout. So let's see how that works by saying view, uh, add sub view of Steve Jobs image view. And let's go down here and say, Let's see, Steve Jobs image view dot frame equals something. And this, you can say CG rect, construct it with this constructor over there. And get some more spacing down here. And let's see, what do I need this to be? Well, let's just say zero, zero, and width of 100, and height of also 100. So running this now, we should be able to see a 100 by 100 square in the top left corner. And that should show up right there. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see that the image is actually underneath the notch at the very top in an iPhone 10. So using these frames is already a very bad idea. And instead we will use auto layout to make sure things appear where they need to be. So the way that you would do this is to first set this image view up here. And you just wanna set this really, really long property to false. And pretty much, you know, this enables auto layout. And now we can start using constraints to anchor this guy in the top left corner. And the way this works is you can just simply say Steve Jobs, see Steve Jobs image view dot top anchor. And let's constraint it to something. And let me see what can I do here. Let me pull this up. The constraint will be on the, let's see, views top anchor. And then we can activate this guy with is active equals to true. And now we just have to place it on the left side as well. So Steve Jobs image view, left anchor constraints. This will be the views left anchor is active equals to true. And next I want to kind of keep the width of 100 and also the height of 100. So that's going to work very similarly, but instead we'll use a width anchor with a constraint of equal to constant of 100. And you can just copy and paste this and modify this to be the height anchor. Hopefully that's straightforward and simple enough. Is active equals to true and then dot is active equals to true. Okay, so all that code will do exactly what this frame did, uh, but instead we can start modifying this little constraint code up here so that we can get it away from the notch area. So the way that you would do that is to modify the top anchor to be constrained to the views safe 
area layout guide dot top anchor and then run your code so this pretty much specifies the safe area in which you are kind of away from these notches on the top and this bottom little indicator line near the, uh, the bottom there so you can see that we are no longer being hidden underneath the status bar and the notch and now comes the fun part of actually providing the animations for this little image view all right so the first thing we need to do inside of our code is to make sure we can tap the image and also execute some code upon tapping that image so the way you have to do this is to first set image view dot user interaction equals enabled and we have to set that to true and then you have to say image view dot add gesture recognizer of ui tap gesture and that's just going to be a single tap and construct it with target of self and the selector of pound selector and let's say handle animates copy this function provided down here with objective c function and handle animate so you can try to print and down here we will say trying to animate to the other corner and let's see if we can actually get this print statement to show up in the bottom area so I don't think it will show up just yet so let me hit that and we don't get anything being fired off in the console so why is that well the thing that's strange about Swift and the way these target actions work is you need the self to be kind of accessible inside of these closure blocks which is what this is called over here this is a closure or a block and if you change the let to a lazy var that enables the self to be available I believe and once you just make that small modification to your code you can now see this print statement anytime I tap on the image down below so it's a little strange and that's the fix that I am aware of so just give this a try and you should be okay all right so let me now show you how animation works inside of Swift and it's actually pretty easy to do you just type in UI view and animate and I will use this little method call down here and let's just use the duration of 0 0.5 seconds delay of 0 uh, damping of 1 initial spring velocity of 1 and the options will use curve ease out for some nice acceleration and the animations will hit enter giving us this block here and for the completion block I believe I'll just use nil because I don't really care when the animation completes so let me show you how to actually animate something inside of this block here by changing self jobs image view dot frame equals something else now if you just put in something like cg rect of let's say this over here x of i don't know 200 y of 0 50 and 50 you will see the image view from the top left corner slide over to the right a little bit and the image and width will change kind of like that so that's how animation is executed inside of swift like i said already it's very very simple to do so with just a few lines of code and now i would like to instead of animating this to the top over there i would like to put it to the top right corner kind of like this over here so it's going to go all the way to the right side over there and to the corner so the way that you would do this very easily is to establish some variables inside of your code. So I'm going to say var left, let's see left anchor, and let's just set it to be of type ns layout constraint, and let it be of type optional, and we'll say var right anchor, and let it also be of ns layout constraint type. So once I have these two variables inside of my view controller. I can set these anchors to those variables. In other words, I can say, let's see, I can take all of this over here and let me copy that. Say left anchor equals all of that. And then right below, you can just say left anchor dot is active equals to true. And I can comment that out. So basically these two lines will kind of do what this does. But now we are setting this local property over here to be that left anchor. So if I wanted to create the right anchor, I can do something very similar with Steve Jobs image view. And we'll say right anchor dot constraints. See, I think it's this one over here. And we'll set it equal to the views dot right anchor like that. 
and I will not activate it because in the very beginning I want it to be in the top left corner so we have the top we have the left and this will not be active all right so what I'm going to do is during the animate over here if I run the code you'll see that the image view is going to be in the top left corner I'm going to modify the constraints inside of this method and the way I'm going to do that is to first deactivate this left anchor with is active equals to false and then next I'll say right anchor is active equals to true so we're pretty much taking it from the left edge all the way to the right edge with these two uh, boolean values and then finally inside of the animation block over here you can just say self.view layout if needed and that should be all that's required to perform the constraint change and the relayout inside of some kind of animation block so click on there you see that the image slides from the left all the way to the right so that's pretty much how your constraints need to be animated in terms of setting up the active properties here and then executing a self.view layout if needed so it's very important that you don't call perhaps Steve Jobs image view layout if needed. I don't think this actually works. I think you actually need to call it on the super view. So that kind of just jumps over to the right. So make sure to use self.view over there. And now if you wanted to animate it to the bottom, it's very similar. I'm going to say var top anchor and it's layout constraint optional var bottom, say bottom anchor. And that's layout constraints and you would just do the same thing with the top anchor over here so let me copy this or perhaps cut and just say top anchor equals all of that so the top anchor code and then we can simply say top anchor optional is active equals to true and then down below i'll also set up the bottom anchor and i won't activate it says so steve jobs image view bottom anchor constraint equals to something and this will be the views bottom anchor Let's see bottom anchor i think that's all i need and i don't need to activate it so we're going to leave it like that and what i can do is if i wanted to modify the animation so that if i click on it and it appears down at the corner i can say let's see top anchor dot is active equals to false and then finally somewhere over here uh, bottom anchor is active equals to true so that's going to mean that the bottom and the right is true so it'll slide all the way down to the corner over here so click on that and it slides down there if I drag this over and flip it around you see that it remains nicely in this corner over here so one problem is that every time you have an iPhone 10 there's a potential for this notch blocking your UI components. So the way that you would fix this is to use the safe area layout guides down below for your anchoring. And what I mean is, let's say the right anchor is over here. I would like to use the views dot safe area layout guide, right anchor. And you pretty much have to do the same thing for all of your anchors. So safe area layout guide, the left one, you also need this as well so now we will try to run this and you'll see that the animation to the bottom right corner will not be hidden underneath the notch so let me flip it around and it's actually on the left of the safe area layout guide which is right here and if the notch appeared over here it would be somewhere over there so all right so the final thing i do want to mention here is that you can also animate the width and height anchors to a larger constant value so in other words, if I wanted to modify Steve's job to be a width of 200 and a height of 200 during that animation, I can do it with the same little approach that I'm going to type out here with width anchor, NS layout constraint optional, bar height anchor, see anchor, NS layout constraint optional. And then down here, I will modify this so that I can capture those properties with anchor equals this over here let's copy or cut paste that over here you just type in with anchor and let's kind of use an optional here because this with anchor is an optional down here you can just say height anchor equals all of this so let's cut paste let's see height anchor and just 
copy all of that code inside. So now that you have width and height anchors set up, you can go back to the handle animate method. And let's say inside of here, you want to change width anchor.constant, change that to something perhaps 200, and height anchor to be constant of, let's say 200 as well. Now the animation will change to a much larger image of Steve Jobs as you are animating. So click on that, you see how it grows out really, really large like that. Now the same thing can be applied to the left anchor and all of these other anchors. If you wanted to push this from the right edge a little bit, I believe you can say right anchor dot constant. I think you have to set it to like negative 16 or some kind of negative value to push it from the right edge. And you have to have a positive value from the left and the top. So click on that, you see how it's uh, provides a little bit of padding, which is always something that you have to do to have a good looking UI. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. And I do highly recommend that if you're trying to animate constraints using auto layout, do this programmatically at least first before you approach it using the storyboard because all the outlets will become really confusing if you don't know what's going on. Okay, so if you wanna download the source code for today's video, make sure to check it out down below. If you want to learn a little bit more about Swift development, make sure to check out the core data course over here and also our Instagram course right here. I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it and you'll definitely learn a lot. And that's gonna be it for me today. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye guys.